Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah. Over the weekend, I watched a Japanese horror film based off of an urban legend called Carved, The Slit-Faced Woman. Let's start things off by checking out the trailer. え、口先女は口見て何度殺しても生き返る。誰なんですかあの人。さっきこの目で見て口先女の正体だと確信しました。病気で病気で落とさないと。また生き返ってお前を殺すよ。口先女。So there you have it. Uh, the trailer pretty much you know, sums it up. Some trailers are good. Some trailers are bad. Uh, that one didn't really promise more than what it has to offer. A few years ago, eh, more than a few years ago, uh, I did not have internet at my home. I, I just don't see it as a necessity for the, the home. I see a need for work and so forth, but just not at my house. So what I would do is I would go to the library and I would find these movies on YouTube and I would download them onto a thumb drive and I'd take them home and I'd watch them very much into the Asian horror stuff. And this was, man, how many years ago? This has to be maybe like six years ago. Uh, I saw some screenshots of this, the slit faced woman. And I was interested in watching it. I couldn't find it anywhere for me to get access to. It wasn't on YouTube. And it kind of just, you know, out of sight, out of mind. I, I kind of forgot about it. Over the weekend, I was watching some YouTuber uh, doing something that he calls uh, the whole iceberg Asian horror type thing. And he brought up this movie. And I was like, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. So then I searched for it again. Um, I now have a housemate who pays for internet. And so we have internet at my house now. So I look it up on YouTube, I find it, and I was really excited to watch it. And generally, I think Asians do horror very well. This one in particular, I thought was quite lackluster. Let's get into some of the historical information, historical uh, about the slit face woman. If you check it out on Wikipedia, it says the slit mouth woman, I said faced, it's mouth, my apologies. The slit mouth woman is a malevolent, malevolent figure in Japanese urban legend and folklore described as a malicious spirit of a woman. She partially covers her face with a mask or other items and carries a pair of scissors or sharp objects. According to popular legend, she asks po uh, potential victims if they think she is beautiful. We'll get more into that. According to the legend, the slit mouth woman was a woman who was mutilated during her life with her mouth being slit from ear to ear. In some versions of the story, the slit mouth woman was an adulterous wife or a mistress of a samurai. During her life, she grew lonely because the samurai was always away from home fighting and began having affairs with men around the town. When the samurai heard of this, he was outraged and punished her for her infidelity. Her husband sliced the corners of her mouth from ear to ear. In other versions of the tale, her mouth was mutilated during a medical or dental procedure or by women, uh, a woman who was jealous of her beauty. So this legend 
seems to date back to the 17th or 19th century during Japan's Edo period. I'm not going to pretend like I know what that means, but there you go. So it's been a long time. It's not a modern urban legend. This is a very, from a long time ago, it says that, that it regained popularity and awareness in the 1970s when several newspapers and magazines re- reported on the legend and Ruben, rumors surrounding it spread throughout the country, leading to young children being accompanied by groups of adults while walking from home, walking home from school. With that, it kind of makes sense that this movie, uh, I don't know, you saw in the trailer, it said 1970. I have no idea what the rest of the text said, but it would make sense that they're basing it off of this. Now, it says here, it, it talking about what happens if you have an encounter with a slit mouth woman. She will come to you. She will say, am I pretty? And if you say no, then she kills you. And if you say yes, then she removes the mask or whatever she's blocking. In one of the things I was reading, it said that she carries like a, a fan, which I like the idea of this old style uh, Japanese woman walking around in her gown and having a fan and asking if she's pretty and then removing the fan and seeing that slit. If you say no after seeing her, then she cuts you in half, which is still just her killing you. And if you still say yes, then she slits your mouth, not killing you, but slits your mouth in uh, you know the same way that she, which by the way, that Heath Ledger's Joker. You know how I got these scars? I ran into the slit mouth woman. I don't know what that that voice was. I, I don't think that was actually supposed to be Heath Ledger. That was just supposed to be not m- my voice. That was supposed to be a Joker voice, but it definitely was not Heath Ledger. So there you go. Heath Ledger ran into this lip mouth woman, and he said that she was beautiful even after seeing her scars, and she cut his face. So there are ways to escape after having an encounter with the slit mouth woman. An individual can survive an encounter. This is, of course, all according to Wikipedia. You know, the bearer of all truth and knowledge. An individual can survive an encounter with the slit mouth woman by using one of several methods. In some versions of the legend, the slit mouth woman will leave the potential victim alone if they answer yes to both her questions. Though in other versions, she will visit the individual's residence later that night and murder the person while sleeping. Nice. Another tactic is to say that the individual is running late. You just go, ma'am, I, I'm, I'm late. I just, I don't have time for this right now. Then she'll just be like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And you can be on your way. <laughs> Which she's, look, she may be a murderer, but she's, you know, she's thoughtful about other people's time. What more can you ask? Am I right? Other survival tactics include replying to the slit mouth woman's question is to describe her appearance as average. This is another <laughs> I really like this. She's just so she's so stunned. It's like you tell her she's ugly, she gets pissed off and she kills you. If you tell her she's beautiful, she's like, I'm not sure I believe you. And if you think I'm so pretty, then how about I give you these scars? But if you just say, eh. You're average. She's just like, and, and she doesn't know what to do with that. And then it gives you time to escape. So you can distract her by throwing money or hard candy, which it just, it, it makes me laugh. And then it says, or by saying the word pomade three times. I don't know what pomade means. And I don't know what the translation is. Give me a second. Let me see if I can figure this out. It says pomade is a greasy, waxy, or watery-based substance that is used to style hair. I got to tell you, that makes absolutely no sense in regard to this legend. I don't know why she's scared of hair products, but it seems to me like that may not be entirely accurate. Okay, let's get back to the movie. 
This movie seems to throw all of that legend out the window. It's just like, F that. We're going to come up with our own thing, other than having the woman's mouth slit. This movie seems to focus on abusive mothers. Really weird. It, it kind of starts off with these kids talking about this legend, and then a couple of them being abducted, and there being search parties, and then enters uh, a young girl who is standing in her living room with her mom. I don't, I don't entirely remember this, the whole scenario here, other than she's like not answering her mom's questions. She's just standing there kind of like, it, it's weird. So her mom like smacks her, okay? And she's like, are you gonna answer me? She still doesn't answer. She just standing there like a ding dong. And so her mom smacks her again. Kid goes to school. Uh, she's talking to her teacher and she's like, my mom doesn't love me and her mom. And the teacher's like, oh, you know, yes, she does. And the little girl starts, you know, showing her like she pulls up her sleeve and she has bruises on her arms and she like pulls down the corner of her shoulder and shows she has a bruise there. And then she takes off this face. Man, she has a bruise on her face. And the teacher's like, no, that's not true. Uh, your mom loves you. I, I could see it in her eyes, you know, and basically trying to tell this girl that her experience with her mom beating her. I, d I don't know. I, it, it wasn't really victim shaming, but uh, this teacher definitely was kind of like, no, your mom loves you. There, there must be some misunderstanding. I'll make sure she doesn't do that. Then we come to find out that this teacher has a daughter, a young daughter, and the woman beats her daughter. I, this is, it's not funny. Child abuse is not funny. So there's this flashback of uh, this teacher then with her very young daughter. And she's like, do you, do you love your daddy more than me? And the little girl's like, yeah, I do. And she's like, why? And she's like, because daddy doesn't hit me. So what's a woman do? Obviously she hits her because, you know, negative reinforcement. That's what it's all about. So and she smacks the little girl. How dare you say that you love your dad because I hit you? Makes no sense. So obviously we have some weird uh, thing going on here with the teacher has some remorse and frustration for what she did to her daughter. I, I can barely remember English names from people in, in movies, the character names. I, I'm sure the heck don't remember the names of the characters in this movie. My apology. So the little girl with the bruises, she gets taken by the slit mouth woman. The teacher witnesses the whole thing. Uh, that was the part in the trailer where you see the mask get removed and the woman open her mouth, which by the way, practical effects, I like them. You know it. I thought it was decent. And oddly enough, I found that woman attractive, yeah, even with a slit mouth. So I would survive. I may get my face split open, but I would survive unless I had hard candies. Doesn't generally happen. I'll have to start carrying some around with me. Anyway, so that little girl with the bruises gets taken by the slit mouth woman. The teacher's freaking out. Everybody's looking. Uh, there's another, there's a, like a male teacher there. They start discussing things. I wish they would have stuck with the original legend instead of going silly and going their own path. So then you find out from this male teacher, he's like, I know who that woman is. And it's like, well, who is she? It's my mother. It's like, what? Oh. So then he starts telling the story about his mom, how he had a, a brother and a sister and his mom beat them. I'm, I'm telling you, this whole movie is just about child abuse. And she's, she's like, it shows a scene of her smacking the kids one at a time. Bam, the first kid goes down. Bam, the second kid goes down. Bam, the third kid goes down. And uh, this guy says, and one day my brother disappeared. And then, and then my sister disappeared. And then my mom disappeared. And, and that's like the end of his story. And it's like, okay, and he's like 10 years old. And okay, so what happened to you? What, what's the rest of your story? What happened here? They leave it at that. And he's like, yeah, that's, that's my mom. I, I recognize her. It's really weird. This makes no sense within the confines of the urban legend. If she, if this whole thing is based off of just like child abuse and this, and the slit mouth woman being a child abuser and her going around and kidnapping kids and killing them, what's the connection with the whole, am I pretty? Why, why are you saying, what kind of weird person are you? It, it, the connection just doesn't make sense. 
the slit mouth woman is appearing in different places, taking kids, more kids are disappearing. Now, when they've encountered the slit mouth woman, they've been able to kill her. But she has like these weird, like Agent Smith from the Matrix powers, where it, if you're a woman, she can just like use you and suddenly she, that woman becomes the slit mouth woman. And if you kill the slit mouth woman, then she just turns back into the woman she used to be. And it's like, oh, you just killed the other woman. So it's like you can't really kill her. So nothing happens there. But there's just like this trail of dead women now from them killing the slit mouth woman. But there, there's never, ever, any, never, there's no repercussions. They, there's no like, well, I didn't try to kill her. I tried to kill a different woman. Yeah, but the point is, you still killed this woman, so we're going to lock you up. No, these people are just running around free, killing killing people. Or or the cops are buying the whole idea that it was a slit mouth woman, and so therefore it's okay, and we're just, well, too bad, too bad. These moms are getting killed, and now these, these children have no parents to take care of them. Eventually, this guy is like, well, let's go back to my own old house where he used to live, which is abandoned. Nobody's living in it. They go there, and then they find a basement that he didn't know about when they were kids. And now more of the story unravels that he didn't share. His mom didn't just disappear. We have another flashback. Again, he gets a smack across the face. He's on the ground. And then his mom's like, oh, oh, like like she was in some kind of a, I don't know, madness, state of madness. And then she's like, oh, my gosh, I did it again. And she's like grabbing him. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did it hurt? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then she leaves the room and she comes back with a big old knife. And you're like, oh, that OK, that was fast. She had remorse. And now she's just like, I'm going to kill this kid. She ends up giving the knife to him. And she's like, you have to end this. You have to cut my head off, which is a very specific and odd, especially for a 10 year old. I know movies like to make it seem like it's easy to cut people's heads off, but I doubt it is easy to get a knife through somebody's spinal cord. So she hands the knife to him and she's like, you, you got to kill me before I end up killing you. And he's like, no, mom, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then she starts going to one of her crazy rages again and coming after him. And he just like wildly swings the knife, which she gets cut across the mouth. Again, what correlation does this have with am I pretty? It, it's mm, just makes me infuriated. Uh, that obviously did not make her happy that her mouth got slit open. And then she starts coming after him again. And he ends up stabbing her in the chest. She dies. Uh, he doesn't like the fact he somehow moves her body into this like bed or something. And then he puts like a surgical mask over her face. Cause he doesn't want to see the slits that he caused. And then he puts like a trench coat over her to cover her, which is plays into whenever you see her, she has a surgical mask on and she has a trench coat on. Okay. So they're at the house that that's revealed about the past. They're in the house. They go into the basement. They, they see one of the girls that was taken which leads back to an earlier scene. There's three kids tied up in her basement. And from what I remember, she doesn't ask the kids anything. She just randomly stabs the little boy, just straight up just stabs him and kills him and then dumps his body someplace and they find it in the forest or something. But then she cuts open the mouth of the little girl and sends her back home to her family. They find her alive just with slits. So all you are is left to assume that the little kid, the little boy said, no, your dog ugly. And she stabbed him. And the little girl was like, oh yeah, you're pretty. So she cut her mouth open and sent her back home. But then it makes it very obvious that this third girl that's there, that they definitely want to kill her. The, uh, the slit mouth woman definitely wants to kill her. Why? I don't know. So they make it there. There's a battle. Uh, the little girl, bruised little girl's mom comes and uh, she jumps in, in the way right as the slip mouth woman is ready to stab her. So the mom gets stabbed again. So we have another mom getting murdered. Granted, she she was uh, 
beating her child, but she gave her life for her, saved her. Uh, the slip mouth woman is doing her uh, Agent Smith thing. She's jumping from woman to woman. They keep killing all these ladies. There's like the basement is piling up with different dead women in there. She gets into a, another woman and uh, the guy is remembering like the whole, you got to cut my head off. And the slip mouth woman is like whispering to him, you have to cut my head off. So he cuts her head off and you think, oh, you know, that's the end. The, the spirit, you know, didn't really want to do this. She wanted it to be stopped. Uh, and now it's stopped because the head gets cut off. And this house somehow miraculously just starts collapsing in on itself. So everybody is trapped in the basement. The sun, all this piles of dead women around there, except the teacher, the abusive teacher, and the little girl that had the bruises, they escape before it collapses. Okay, so hooray, what's going to happen with this little girl with the bruises? You know, who knows? She goes into the system, gets passed around into foster homes. We don't know, but she's better off, apparently. The guy gets buried in the basement, and you see him with the dead bodies, and you also see the ghost of his mom standing next to him, not looking like a young woman, but looking like a, a grody person standing there, still in the trench coat, still with a mask on. And you're kind of thinking, okay, it's all over. The curse has been broken. Hooray. Let's go to the end of the movie. We got the teacher. She's on a playground. You see her husband, which I'm assuming is her ex-husband, holding their very young daughter. And the husband's like, okay, we're here. What do you want? And she says, I need to talk to our daughter. I'd like to talk to her alone. Is that okay? And he's like, okay. And he sets the daughter down and he walks away to who the heck knows where. Apparently, he just teleports away because then there's nobody there. It's just the teacher and her daughter. And she, like, bends down and she starts saying something. I don't know the exact words, but it's basically like, oh, I'm so sorry. I love you. It's never going to happen again. And then she, you know, the camera uh, angle switches as the, the teacher is standing up. And lo and behold, she turns into the slit mouth woman. And she's got her scissors and the little girl standing in front of her and movie ends. So I don't know what the heck this movie, this movie was not scary. I'm not sure what they were going for with the child abuse thing. Apparently there is another one. There's a sequel. I didn't check that out. I know nothing about it. But how this connects to the actual urban legend makes no sense to me. The practical effects were decent with the woman's mouth opening. That's That was the extent of the practical effects in there. The rest is, it's just basically a slasher movie, but like a PG-13 type slasher movie. Uh, being that it was involving killing kids, they didn't generally show it. I would not recommend this movie. It was not great. The acting, even I've said in the past, I, I'm not really sure when they're speaking in another language how great their acting is. This this did not seem great to me. The story just sucked. This is, this is like a three for me. This, I would not rewatch this. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Not much else to say. Uh, again, carved the slip mouth woman. I would generally just pass on this movie, but it's not the worst thing I've seen. I'd watch this over Terrifier any day. Uh, now, comparing this to Carnosaur, would I watch this over Carnosaur? Hmm. Okay. Now, now we're getting in some difficult territory here. I think I would watch this over Carnosaur only because it was subtitled, so I feel like I kind of missed some things. And if I gave it a second watch, I feel like things may be a little more clear. Like, maybe... Maybe I might understand why she asks, am I pretty? It, when the whole thing is about her being a child abuser. And I don't know. If you guys have an answer, if you've seen this movie and you have an answer, I would love to know what it is. If you have a suggestion for a foreign horror movie you'd like me to watch, please send it my way. I would appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment, even if it's a, hey, you suck. I'd love to read it, and I'd love to comment back. 
and I will see you, um, let's see, last week we streamed The Refrigerator, a 1991 horror movie, and we will be doing a review of that next, so stay tuned, I appreciate it, see you later. 